Does infrared therapy help in the management of pain conditions like fibromyalgia? This was one of the questions that was posed to me by my viewers and thank you for that really. It allows me to make this video on what is the role of infrared light therapy and why is that really useful for certain pain conditions. The bottom line is that there is definitely a role for this kind of infrared techniques for managing not just fibromyalgia pains but a variety of other musculoskeletal pain arthritic pains and indeed some other conditions as well where pain is a critical common factor why is that what is it about infrared therapy that makes the difference and for that we need to ask well actually what is infrared light and and what is actually formed when you go to these infrared saunas or is it an infrared lamp what's happening there well, first of all, infrared light, a little bit of basic sort of GCSE level physics, is, is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. And it has a radiation that is emitted by certain heat emitting bodies, will all emit infrared heat or light. And the area of this particular radiation lies between, the wavelength lies between the microwave radiation and visible light. So it sort of works out in what's called nanometers to 0.1 millimeters. I don't think you have to get worried about the actual wavelength part there, but suffice to say that the way we think about infrared is based on its frequency and wavelength. And what we find is that when you have a higher frequency, it's able to go slightly deeper into the body. And that means that the infrared radiation is divided into three kinds of infrared radiation. One is called the near infrared, which is infrared A, and that has a higher frequency. And then there's the infrared B, which is a mid range, and IRC, infrared C, which is called the far infrared, which has got a longer wavelength, but a shorter frequency. What's the relevance again? If you have a higher frequency and a shorter wavelength, you're going to have more deeper penetration, which means that infrared A can actually go deeper up to five millimeters in your body. And that's the kind of light that's there in the infrared lamps that is often available for, you know, for public use there. Actually, we think that while the light can go up to five millimeters, the warmth that comes from this light can go a further two to three centimeters inside your body. So you can think about the area. For example, if you were to have an infrared lamp treatment onto your thigh muscles, then you'd have the direct effect of the radiation going for the first few millimeters, but then the mechanical effect of conduction going for a further three to four centimeters. That's why infrared A is often used in the lamps there. Infrared B and C have got longer wavelengths and shorter frequency, so they go even lesser into the body. And that is why when you go for an infrared sauna, it's usually in far infrared radiation, uh, infrared C that is usually seen in the IR saunas that you might be, or you might have visited or gone to. Now, how is actually all of this helping? What does infrared light do? We now understand that when this light enters into the body, when this radiation enters into the body and it brings about a certain transfer of heat, it actually raises the, brings about changes within the cells of the body. It increases the amount of calcium that is released into the cells. And this brings about a complicated set of various metabolic processes within the cell. Ultimately, it ends up releasing reactive oxygen species, ROS as they are called. And the other thing is the release of nitric oxide. Now nitric oxide at that small quantity just outside the cells 
ends up causing a dilatation. It causes uh, enlargement of the blood vessels, improves the blood flow. In the case of muscles, allows for muscle relaxation, allows for washing away of the chemicals at the site where it has happened. And that is the process and how it brings about pain relief. So that is why you can find that infrared therapy has been used for a variety of musculoskeletal conditions and why it can be used for sometimes the trigger points or tender points in fibromyalgia. When we looked at the studies there, there has been one really good what we call systematic review and these researchers published their findings in 2022 looking at the overall role of infrared therapy on various musculoskeletal conditions including fibromyalgia. And up to now, four studies have been done in fibromyalgia patients, just an overall of 12 studies in effect on any kind of pain conditions. And in these four studies on fibromyalgia, what they have noticed is that there is an improvement in a particular question. So improvement in quality of life, reduction in intensity of pain, and improvement in the fibromyalgia impact question. So positive signals, not a mind-blowing awesome evidence, but certainly it's fairly safe and it's worth considering. We don't recommend more than 10 to 15 minutes of exposure to infrared therapy at any one time. So that's just the only caution, whether that's a sauna, or whether that's a lamp, that would be the upper limit in terms of how much heat is transferred. But otherwise, as a technique, it's worth considering. Right now in the United Kingdom, we don't think we've got the evidence to actually say that this should be offered routinely on the NHS. Certainly the quality of evidence isn't high enough, but if you wish to try it, it's certainly something to explore and look at now that you understand the basics, the reason and why it might be helpful. I hope you found this video useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it of value. So. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel and click on the bell button to be notified when the next video comes along.